Hey there folks, Foggy here. Welcome to day 205 of my year of solo board gaming, considered by many to be ill-advised and stupid. And uh, we are quickly reaching the end of this. Uh, we have this and one more adventure to go. And I'm just going to make sure that we don't get any of the weird jiggles, which I should have done before I started hitting record. There we go. Autofocus turned off, so now I'm going to bring stuff out. It won't try to focus on it. Okay. And we got my coffee here, which won't spill at all. Foreshadowing. Okay, so scenario six, and this is uh, there are seven scenarios. It's, it builds itself as an eight scenario thing because that's because there is a scenario one A and one B that you can take in either order. Um, but this is uh, we we are going in scenario. Uh, we are almost penult penultimate scenario. You awaken to the sound of screeching. Fearing the worst, you grab your equipment and head out to the streets of Dunwich. As soon as you step outside, you feel sense a foulness in the cold night air, an awful pungent smell that can scarcely be described, and a heaviness to the atmosphere that makes it difficult to breathe. The citizens of Dunwich have sealed their doors, and the town feels quiet and lonesome. In the distance, a faint glow emanates from a hilltop above the village. You know of this hill from both your interactions with Subulon and Armitage's records. It's called Sentinel Hill. Uh, this, the tale speaks of satanic rites being performed there, rites in which great ritual pyres light up the night sky while the ground rumbles furiously below. Flocks of whippoorwills perch on the rooftops of the village around you, watching ominously as you climb into Zebulon's old and beat-up truck. As you drive toward Sentinel Hill, more screeching fills the sky and an awful pitch that is painful to your ears. Everything you have read about and experienced in Dunwich has led to this. If the foul ritual Seth seeks to perform has anything to do with what Armitage and his colleagues prevented several months back, it involves the favor of an ancient creature, Yog sothoth Failing to stop this ritual may spell doom, not only Dunwich, but for the entire world. And uh, there's a part that we skipped because uh, we pissed off the O'Bannons. Uh, and then everything else, uh, we've got... Uh, set up. Unfortunately, we don't start with any doom, uh, so it's going to be a while before this gets moved over, uh, because we managed to save everybody, or deal with all the broods, uh, deal with all, with all five of them. Uh, however, we do have one uh, enemy. Because we uh, put Silas out of his misery, turns out that was maybe the wrong thing to do. We have a conglomeration of spheres here, which is going to prey on whoever's got the lowest um, lowest brain and believe it or not that's daisy uh and that's going to do some damage if she catches up with it so daisy's main priority here is to get healed quick and fortunately she's got uh medical tests so she's going to actually be able to play this and at least use it twice uh and hopefully not fail because she's got a pretty good chance of using this uh as far as uh as far as going i i would prefer that she investigate because this thing's got a three and we kind of need the investigation as well but unfortunately, I need her healthy first, and then I can have her investigate. And I do not know what I I do not know what I'm going to do about this, um, because this is going to be difficult to deal with. Uh, I do have a number of things in the red at the ready, um, and it looks like I can actually play this police badge, which is one of the new cards I got, and that will allow Mer uh, Daisy to take a couple extra turns, which I might need to do. Uh, so looking over the cards. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off, Zoe's going to take one extra resource, and then she is going to activate both Machete and Police Badge. All right. And that uses up all her resources and all her turns. We're sort of just getting ready for the fight that's about to come our way. Uh, Daisy, on the other hand, is going to activate medical texts uh, for two, and then she's going to choose an investigator. This is an additional action. It's a skull. Reveal another token, cancel the effects and icons of each skill card committed to this test. So fortunately, I've not uh, done, it's not committed anything to this. 
it's a minus three. This was a new one that we put in. Fortunately, even with the minus three, that's still enough to actually heal her. So that will heal one damage. And we are going to try again. Minus one, even with the minus one. I don't know why I threw that in there. Uh, that is going to heal her as well. All right. So now uh, that's it for both their turns. I'm not going to get rid of this yet. I actually kind of want to wait until the next turn and then potentially just get rid of this uh, and then take a two, addition, two additional turns because I'll get a... This has got a weak attack. It's only got a one for attack. So with this, I'll be able to get five attacks and I'll have to engage with it first um, because what's going to happen is now it's the monster's turn. So let's do this monster's turn. We're going to move all this up here so it's a little bit out of the way. Uh, now, it can come off the ascending path, but we can't go up to the ascending path. Part of what's going on here is that we actually have to find some alt uh, divergent paths down here before we can do anything. Uh, so the conglomeration of spheres comes down here. Its prey is going to be the lowest uh, skull, so it's going to go after her. And it's going to do one damage and one health. All right. And then that's the end of it. Each of these two are going to draw their cards. I get one Fearless, I get one Kukri, which is kind of nice, and then one resource each, and then we move on. So first up, uh, Wizard of Yogg-Sothoth. Uh, Prey is going to be least cards in hand, so that is, I think, yeah, it's going to be her, uh, which is irritating because I, I kind of wanted to defeat her first, and then take on the conglomeration of spheres. Now it's going to have to be. It's going to be tricky. Devotee of the key spawn at base of the hill. Uh, at the enemy phase, devotee of the key moves once toward Sentinel Peak. If the devotee of the key is already at Sentinel Peak, discard it and add two doom to the agenda. So I don't think it engages with anybody. It spawns. It's going to spawn at one of our for one of us. I think I'm going to have it spawn with with Daisy, but good lord, this is getting to be a mess. I, I did not like getting both of those. We're going to make sure that we do one more shuffle here and just make sure everything is shuffled up. Because that felt to me very unshuffled. This is going to be tricky. All right, well, first up, uh, she's got a four, and right now that's going to give me five. It's only one more than that. I'm actually going to use overpower here. That'll give me seven compared to four. It's a skull, minus three. Uh, discard the top two cards of your deck, not minus three. X is the printed cost of both those discarded cards. So that's two and nothing. So minus two, which I still had to get rid of the two cards, but it's enough to do two damage. Uh, it's the only one I'm engaged with right now. And so now we're going to go again. Zero. Thankfully, this time I succeed because I forgot I only had plus one on that. <laughs> Um, but that is enough to kill the wizard. The wizard's going to go into our victory area. And we're up to a second action. So I think the second action I'm going to do is to engage... I'm going to engage the devotee of the key. I'm then going to toss this police badge. So I'm also noticing something else. I'm going to lose the melee weapon as soon as I use it to attack the conglomeration of spears. This is not looking good. 
Uh, so I'm going to attack. Uh, it's got three. I've got four, five. I think that's all I can really commit. All right, two more cards get discarded. Guts and one, which so Liquid Courage, which I really kind of wanted because I need to get rid of that horror. But it is enough to do some damage, and so it's going to take two damage to start. All right, we're going to go again. Give a good shuffle. I almost got a, uh, a, a thing yesterday to help with the drawing of these. Skull, negative one, negative three if you're at an altered location. So fortunately enough to still do some damage. And the devotee of the key is dead. Uh, this one just gets discarded. All right, so that was five actions. That was two to kill wizard, one to engage, two to kill uh, the devotee of the key. So now we go on to Daisy. Daisy's just going to have to attack. Does she have anything to attack with? No. She can play Mind Over Matter. It's a fast card. This will allow her to use Book this time around. Uh, until the end of the round, you may use your Book in place of your Fist or Flight. And so I think what I'm going to do is just simply start attacking. Uh, I get to attack two more times. Hopefully on the next turn I can just deal with this. Uh, so the first attack is going to be Skull, which is negative one, uh, but fortunately that is enough to do some damage. What I really need is that Scrying spell. I just realized I could have taken an extra action on the previous turn because it's, uh, the medical text is a tome. Minus one, so that is success. Problem is, if I use it now, it's going to be an attack of opportunity, which will deal an additional horror and won't really help me as far as health goes. So it can only really hurt me, uh, is the thing. So the monsters attack. Uh, the, monster, the conglomeration of spheres is going to attack and do one more damage of each. And then exhaust. And I think that's all I can really do. Uh, each of them are going to draw a card to Right of Seeking, Dr. Henry Armitage. So we're going to get one more token each here, and then we're going to add to the Doom. First up, Obscuring Fog. Attach to your location. Limit one per location. Uh, each attached location gets plus two Shroud. Um, after attached location is successfully investigated, discard Obscuring Fog. Crazed Shagath, spawn nearest altered location. Well, there's none out. That's the problem. So I'm kind of curious what happens in this case where it's telling me to spawn someone somewhere, and I cannot. It does not spawn and is discarded instead. All right, excellent. It does not say that in the rules that that card then gets Surge. So I am going to enjoy the fact that that just worked out in my favor. All right, so now we're going to go on to some additional turns. Um, uh, she is going to play the knife, engage the conglomeration of spheres, and then attack it with the knife. She's going to discard it. She's going to get plus two for the attack, and it's also going to deal some additional damage. So she's got the potential of dealing two additional damage on here. Zero. So that is successful. That is two damage, and since the thing was going to get discarded anyway, that is probably for the best. Daisy is now going to go. She is going to go ahead and just attack it again, even though it's no longer engaged with her. It does mean that if I miss, Zoe takes the damage, but if she can attack twice successfully, and again, this is a two to one difference. That's it. Two to one. She just has to get a zero or plus one. Does she have any cards that could help at all? And 
Oh, she's got a knife, actually. She is going to activate the knife and then discard it. So she's going to get plus four, or plus two. She's at four, it's at one, and if I succeed, this thing is dead. Zero, it's a success. Conglomeration of Spheres is dead. Holy cow, that was rough. She is going to go ahead and activate Dr. Henry Armitage. Uh, after you're drawn a non-weakness card, discard that card and exhaust Dr. Henry Armitage. Gain three resources. So this basically means that instead of a card, if, it do, if you don't feel like it's going to help, you can basically just go ahead and bring it. Uh, you can have some fun stuff with it. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and do one more test uh, to see if she can heal herself. Since basically she's back at the beginning again. Uh, this time it's going to be five to two. Minus two, minus two is still successful. She heals herself. Okay. That is the end of the turn. There are no monsters out. We are going to advance, uh, draw, each draw a card. She gets emergency aid. That is going to be helpful. Uh, expose weakness. That'll be helpful as well. And they're each going to get a resource. Now we advance the agenda. Okay. Vortex of time. Each uh, investigator at a Sentinel Hill tests horror four. Each investigator who fails takes two damage. You guys really do not want me to have uh, have Daisy heal, do you? Okay, zero. So so he succeeds. I'm going to go ahead and play heal fearless. This is going to make it even Steven as far as that goes. Skull negative one. So unfortunately. That hurts her, and she's at four damage. Getting a little tired of this, and this was just the first one. Test three. For each fail point you fail by, take one horror. Minus one. It is a fail. She failed by one, so she only takes one horror, but still. Okay, I'm going to play this emergency aid. So we can heal two damage from Daisy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and what else can I do? I think I'm literally just going to get resources this time around. There's not much else I can do. Uh, Daisy is, first of all, going to try to help heal herself. Plus one. She succeeds. She's at one damage. Uh, magnifying glass is fast, so she can play that, and that's it. Oh, actually, this goes back to my hand. This is going to be a little weird, because this uh, goes back to your hand if there are no clues at your location. There are no clues here, so she's going to put this back. Uh, we're going to go ahead and commit perception to investigate. Uh, right now, the shroud is five. Her perception is seven. Minus two, minus two, she fails by two. She is gonna try again, this time it's five to five. Minus one, that is a fail. Wait, so this is fast, this can actually come out no matter what. I'm going to count this as being able to be played, and then it just goes back at the end of the investigation, since it is a fast card. So it's going to go back to here. This is the advanced magnifying glass. It's got that special feature to it. So that is going to give me a 6 to 5, and so that minus 1 makes it successful. Feel free to hate me in the comments. I'm not, I, I've not actually seen any of the comments yet about my gameplay for the first three games, mostly because I think only the first two games have gone up so far. So well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but this is now a detached and... Uh, instead of discovering clues, put a random set-aside diverging path into play. So now we've got a diverging path, and I still have one more turn to go. But now it's 5 to 3 instead of 5 to 5. So now we've got one of these. Uh, 
I don't know if putting it into play is means revealing it. I don't think so. Minus two, so five to three with the minus two, that's good. Uh, I'm fine, we can get another divergent path out. Okay, so divergent paths are now out. There are no monsters out, so we can go ahead and flip these. Daisy's tote bag and blackjack, both of which we want. Each gets a resource. I don't know if I remember to use medical. I think I did to use medical test because she was at four. We did, yeah, we did that all that. All right, so now we're at four horror. Let's find out what horror is going to come out. Beyond the veil. Put the beyond the veil uh, surge. So I have to draw another card after it. Basically, this is going to go under my deck, and once there's no uh, cards in the deck, I take ten damage. Thrall, location with the most clues. Well, technically, none of these locations have any clues, so we could spawn it anywhere we want. Um, however, it's also got a relatively low threshold, so I'm going to go ahead and spawn it here. Technically, we're all engaged with it. Ancient Evils, put one Doom token on the agenda. So we're at 5 out of 12. All right, so I'm going to go first. I'm just simply going to attack the Thrall. Uh, it's 4 to... It's four to three. Zero. That's enough. Uh, since it's the only enemy I'm engaged with, it does two damage, and that's the death of the thrall. Uh, Daisy, uh, Zoe's then going to head off to a divergent path. Slaughtered Woods. Uh, after you have revealed Slaughtered Woods, take two horror if you have no action remaining. Fortunately, we have actions remaining. And there are two clues here. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and gain a right, uh, one more resource so I can activate Rite of Seeking on the next round. Daisy, uh, in the meantime, is going to go ahead and play her tote bag, which gives her two additional hand slots for more tomes. Uh, she's going to investigate one more time. Uh, as her second turn. Star. Uh, and that means we get to draw a card. Ward of Protection. Oh, that's nice. All right, that comes back into the hand. We have found the last of the Divergent Paths. Uh, so she's got two more turns that she can take. I'm going to, given the, with the, the text on this one, I'm going to head here. I'm going to stick together. I think we're, we should stick together, and I still have one more turn remaining as long as it is uh, to be used only for Tome abilities. And I'm going to heal myself, and that is successful. I now have zero physical damage on Daisy, which is awesome. Uh, there are no monsters out. We're each going to draw a card. Research Librarian, Emergency Aid. I think I might just use Emergency Aid on Zoe um, soon. Uh, we bring out another Doom token. We're at six. Light of Aforgomon. Peril. You must attach the Light of Aforgomon to either the current agenda or the current act. Uh, treat all damage as direct damage and all horror as direct horror. I'm still not exactly sure what that means. Oops. Uh, test four. And I would then have to discard an asset... Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a non-weakness fast. Play when you draw a non-weakness treachery card, cancel that card's revelation effect, then take one horror. I would rather take the horror than deal with any of this crap. Although my horror level is getting a little high. She's at four right now. Okay, so that's that. Uh... So he's going to use four resources to bring out Rite of Seeking. Three of which will go on here. She will go ahead and search. This will do a four to two search. 
plus one, that is successful. So she actually gets both of the clues. Uh, her last action will be to draw another resource uh, so that she has that at the ready. Daisy's like, well, you didn't leave much for me to do, so I will try to heal your horror. It's a reveal another another token. It's five to two, plus one. That is successful, so her damage is healed. I will go off this way. Three, after you reveal destroyed path, place one doom on it, uh, one per investigator. And if you succeed, instead of discovering clues, remove one doom from it. Yay. Well, we'll go ahead and play magnifying glass because uh, I still have, technically I have two more actions because one of the free extra actions was for a tome. And that's what I did initially. So one, minus two, even with the minus two, that is successful. And then Star, which means I get to draw, draw an extra card. Necronomicon, that's awesome, yay. Well, fortunately, thanks to Daisy's tote bag, I have enough room in my hands for the, for the Necronomicon. That's awesome. That's gonna take three horror. Unbelievable. All right, well, I guess I know what I'm doing over the next three turns. Um, However, she was able to successfully clear the destroyed path, which feels nice. Uh, there are no monsters currently out. We're each going to draw a card. And get a resource. We advance the Doom token, which now is only at 7. Could have been at 9, but fortunately, Daisy stepped up. Light of a Forgotten. So this is going to have to go onto the agenda. Ban it out that way. Dissonant voices. Uh, I cannot play assets or events. All right, so Zoe's going to go first. She's going to head over to this other divergent path here. Slide all this over a little bit. Three, forced. After you reveal Frozen Springs, lose the remainder of your actions and immediately end your turn. Yay! That sucks. Zoe's going to come here. She's going to use one of her free action, or tome action, to get rid of that. Oh, and these should be flipped. Uh, so magnifying glass can stay out now. Again, I've got three hand things out, but the daisy's bag allows for the two extra tomes. Uh, so investigating, uh, it's six to three. Zero, that's one. Zero, that's success. So the normal clues, the magnifying glass goes back into the hand. And now we have exactly four clues. We can go ahead and trade those in and advance the agenda, which means one of our lights of Afrogoman is out of commission, whatever that means. During your search through the wooded paths around the base of Sentinel Hill, you come across a startling sight. A herd of sheep lays dead on the ground in a secluded clearing, their bloodied carcasses placed in a strange but careful pattern. Holding your nose against the stench of death, you step over mangled sheep on your way to the center of the odd formation. In the center of the sheep lies the corpse of a man. A clear jewel has been pressed into his forehead, ca caving in the front of his skull. His eyes are wide, his face contorted in a vision of fear. As if, as if beseeching you for mercy. Though you know better, you check for a pulse. As you touch the man's skin, the jewel in his forehead dissolves, and the woods around you seems to clear. The arcane presence masking the path further up the hill has faded. Reveal ascending path. Remove all clues from each location in play. So first, we have ascending path. And for this, we're going to move all of this over here. Uh, and I think I'm out of actions because it took her one to move, two to search, and then one free one to remove that item from the Necronomicon. All right. 
So now we can head to the ascending path. Uh, although we have to do it sort of roundabout, we have to go back and then up, which is irritating. Uh, ascending the hills, clues cannot be placed on non-altered locations. And when an investigator enters on Sentinel Peak, advance. All right, Sentinel Peak can only be entered to, uh, when we have spent four clues. So there is a direct connection here, but we have to spend four clues to do it. So we're going to need these altered locations over here to be able to search there. Uh, so that'll start on the next turn. So it's going to take us each two moves to get to Ascending Path, and then we can start to search. Boo. All right, so each draw a card. Lightning Gun. This is what this is the thing that the thing I was really happy with. Oh, good. Add Hyperchondria to your threat area. And this, by the way, gets discarded since we managed to get out of that. Uh, uses three ammo. Spend one ammo. You get plus five fight for the attack. This attack deals two damage. That will come in very handy with Silas. Um, it's a special thing I got since I had so much experience from the last one. I'm so happy to have it. It's so It makes me so happy. I do not want to lose this. If I get that freaking Amnesia card, this is the only card that I'm saving. Seriously. All right. But for the meantime... Um, that's her card, and I think I did. I I don't think I drew the. I think I might have drawn for her, but I don't. I haven't done daisies yet. Oh, good. Choose all but one disc and discard all but one card from your hand. Well, I'm going to keep exposed weakness because I feel like the magnifying glass is nice, but not necessarily needed. And I definitely want to be able to help out with Seth as much as I can. Although it's going to be difficult because I keep thinking that this is going to be a great card to play, but really it's test X where that X is uh, enemy, the enemy's fight value. And for the amount that I succeed by, which means that um, uh, oh, I think I forgot something. I think I forgot. I don't know if I did this by my, no, I haven't because I would have noticed that I had two times. Never mind. Um, so the most I can really succeed by is one point. So that would really lower it by one. So I think I'm actually going to, as much as I love this exposed weakness card, I think in the case of Seth, it's not going to be that helpful. And I'd rather keep the magnifying glass because it's a fast card that gives me the plus one to investigate. All right. The card up here. There are no monsters out. So uh, one more token. We're at eight. And I get spaces between. Flitch, flip each non-Sentinel Hill location in play to its unrevealed side, removing any and all clues from it. Uh, so that would be all of these. Each investigator and enemy at a location flipped in this way immediately moves to the nearest Sentinel Hill location. Shuffle each non-Sentinel Hill location so the players do not know which is which. So we both get moved immediately here. This card is awesome. Do you know why this card is awesome? That just saved us two moves, two actions. That is the first time I've ever had a Mythos card actually be helpful. We're going to shuffle all these up. We don't care. We never have to come to any of these again. Thank you, Spaces Between. You're a pal. Thrall. Awesome. Yay. Abomination, so it spawns over here. Spawns at the location with the most clues. You know what? You're going to spawn over here. You're going to spawn over here at Diverging Path because it's all equal. They're all an equal number of clues right now, so I'm going to spawn you over here, and then that way we don't have to deal with you. Neener, 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 neener. All right, so where was I? Okay. Zoe's going to go first. She's going to head straight up to the ascending path. Uh, she is... I kind of want something to deal with. Uh, to deal with my damage. She's going to go ahead and use a right of scrying. Now, I think the the reading of this is, if you succeed, instead of discovering clues, put a random set aside uh, altered path into play. I'm going to read this as, if I'm successful with Rite of Seeking, I get to put two paths into play. If that's not correct, I don't care. Uh, but it's going to be four to three, so it's not that much of an advantage. Um, I could... Oh yeah, I could put art student into play. 
All right, so skull, that means I get to draw another one. I mean, cult member, not skull. That's skull. That's negative one. Uh, but fortunately, it was four to three. We, uh, it's negative three if we're at an altered location. But since we're not, uh, I can just go ahead and count that as a win. So we're going to put two altered path locations into play. Uh, and then I think she's going to go ahead and use... Uh, so there was one, two. She is going to go ahead and do this one more time. I take that back. I cannot do that because um, getting the cult thing meant that after those that symbol is revealed, after uh, I lose all remaining actions and immediately end my turn. So my turn is actually over. I should have noticed that. So the right of seeking does have a distinct definite disadvantage, which is unfortunate. Daisy is going to come up. She's like, let me help. Pull that into play. We're going to use our extra action to get rid of that. All right, I'm at uh, six to three. It's a zero. We're going to go ahead and find that last altered path. Daisy's going to use her last action. Uh, she's just going to go ahead and get rid of the Necronomicon. Because she can. Hypochondria is going to take two turns. I will probably start off with that for her next turn. Uh, but for now, we should be fine. All right, so let's draw. Uh, she gets Deduction. And ooh, that's a really good card. And uh, First Aid, both of which are really helpful. Uh, this first aid is an advanced first aid that will deal uh, heal horror as well as uh, physical damage. So that's going to be really useful. Uh, but for now, we're going to advance the mythos. Uh, that's going to be nine. Now we have to get a, tw a twelve. We flip it over. Kung Lao, oh, this thing. I hate this thing. This thing's going to go up against Daisy. We're just going to move all of this down here since we don't really care about it. <sighs> Servant of the Lurker. Uh, uh, this is also just as nasty. All right, we're going to have to give this to Zoe. So some monsters popped out before we could get much farther. Uh, and that means we have to discard the top two cards of our deck, one of which was our weakness, and the other of which was Dr. Professor Warren Rice. We're sorry. We're sorry, Professor. Okay. What to do, what to do, what to do. All right, so before we can go on to some altered paths here, we're going to have to deal with these monsters as quickly and successfully as possible. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to just go ahead and wail on this guy. Uh, the Servant of the Locker, uh, it's going to be five to four, so it's not a very good fight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the Blackjack as a plus. Minus one, so that is successful. That's going to do two damage to it. Uh, the reason it does two damage is because it is the only thing uh, interacting with me. I'm going to go ahead and use the Kukri as well. Same thing. So, uh, so it's going to be five to four. Uh, sorry, six to four. Six to four. Minus two. That is successful. Uh, we have nothing else that I can really attack with. Uh, or nothing that I really want to attack with. I don't want to use the lightning gun. Because uh, that is going to have limited ammo. And I'm going to save that for Seth. So this is 5 to 4. And it's a failure. Alright, that's good. Awesome. So we're going to be taking some damage on the next turn. Uh, which is not good. Uh, fortunately we have some stuff that will help us out there. Um, but Daisy's got to deal with this now. Uh, so Daisy's really not got that much she can use. Uh, she's got, I mean, she's got a, a, a one for or two for fight. That's it. She has no weapon. Uh, so all she can really do is just hit it as many times as she can. And she's not going to have her extra 
turn to get rid of uh, to get rid of anything. So it's just plus. Uh, it's just we're just gonna draw it until we run out. Skull, which is negative one. We're not at an altered location. Uh, fortunately, that is still enough to do some damage. I'm probably going to have Dr. Denry, uh, Dr. Armitage take the first round of damage. Minus two, that is a fail of attack. Uh, which means I think that it... No, it's only if it retaliates if, it, if we miss. And there's no retaliate on this. Minus one, that is still a success. All right, so now we go into the monster phase. Uh, Dr. Amitage will take the first round of horror. First round of damage there. I do not want him to take too much more of that. Uh, and then we're going to give two horror and two damage to Zoe, which means she's she's really at risk of horror. Uh, succumbing to that. We're each going to get to draw a card. Forbidden Knowledge. Smoking Pipe. That will convert damage to uh, damage to horror. Horror to damage, I mean. And then we draw another one of these. Uh, so our 10, we're getting there. Beyond the Veil, uh, Surge, and then we just ignore this if there is already one in our area. Altered Beast, if there are no Abomination enemies in play. Um, there's an Abomination in play. Uh, there's one, first of all, there are Abomination in plays here and here, but I'm going to actually attach it to the thrall over here since we're ignoring that thrall. Uh, oh, crud. Well, we're going to put it on conglomeration of spheres. It's not going to count as entering their space because we're already in it. So, Okay, so that could have gone better. Uh, she's going to take one more attack on Servant of the Lurker. Star, yes, okay, that's good. That is everything that we needed for this one. Servant of the Lurker is dead. That is actually going to go into our victory pile. Daisy's, uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is bring out um, first aid. It's gonna use four supplies and I'm immediately gonna spend one supply from here to heal one horror and one damage. I'm a little bummed because I'm not going to be able to do any damage to that conglomeration of spheres, but hopefully Daisy will get closer to finishing it off. Oh, and this should have come back here at some point. All right. Unbelievable. Counts as zero, as, as, as if I recall. So we're going to try again. She's going to punch this thing. Minus two. That's a fail. Zero. That is a success. All right. So Daisy's going to take one and one. Uh, and then we're each going to draw a card. Emergency cash and a 45 automatic. We advance the agenda. We're, we've got one more to go before we advance the agenda. Uh, rotten remains. I have to wonder if the direct horror thing means that you can't pass it off to an ally. I'm going to say that that is probably the case and so that I should have had all this over here. That means she has got a ton of horror to deal with. Okay, plus one. So Zoe can deal with the horror of rotting remains. Visions of future past, test five. And I'm gonna discard some cards as a result because uh, there's no way that I can get plus two. That is just insult upon insult. 
So that's minus three. That means I fail by five. One, two, three, four, five. And I am losing a ton of great stuff. I'm losing my shriveling spell, man. I'm losing my shriveling spell. That and blue. All right. So Daisy's up, uh, or Zoe's up. Daisy is going to spend four on an automatic. Does that give me too many? Nope. That is fine. She's going to take an automatic, and she's going to take one shot at the conglomeration of spheres. Which means I think, actually, Daisy is supposed to have one more. Or two more horror. I think two more horrors. I think she's, like, almost dead. All right. Skull, negative one. That's still nowhere near enough to cause a problem. So... This takes one more damage, or actually, it's at five damage now. And then we're going to use this. Because it's not a melee weapon, I don't have to worry about losing it. That's the big reason why I'm doing this this way. Minus two, even with that minus two. Easy shot, conglomerations of sphere is dead. This is down. Those are all three of Zoe's turns. All right, so... Uh, I'm going to use two turns to get rid of hypochondria. I'm then going to use medical test. Plus one, that's a success. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use emergency cash to pull out some extra sort of resources. We're now going to each pull a card. Perception, internal injury. Awesome. Yeah, this, that could be worse. And now we're finally going to go to the next agenda. As you explore the past surrounding Sentinel Hill, the chanting at the hilltop rises to a crescendo and takes an otherworldly quality, reverberating through the trees that carried my unseen currents. The world begins to change. The grass and trees dissolve like sugars into a cup of tea. The vast, vast, endless sky slices through this reality you see before you, and you feel drawn to a terrified and awestruck. The arcane power becomes distorted and seeps around you, creating strange alterations in the land. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. This gets discarded into it as well. I need Daisy to have some way to start dealing with her horror because she's at eight horror and she can deal with one more and that's it. Okay. Dissonant voices. I cannot play assets or events. Visions of... Oh, for, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Minus one. So at least this one isn't as bad. I'm going to lose two cards off the top of my deck. I think, right? No, three cards. I'm getting close to being out of cards. And there goes my other scrying. That's awesome. Uh, so Zoe's primary concern is that she's going to use all three of her first aids. Because uh, I cannot play them, but I still can use them. This gets discarded. She's going to deal two of Daisy's horror. And I'm going to, and that also gets rid of the physical damage. And then I'm going to deal with one horror and one physical over here. And 
round. At the end of the round, we can get rid of this, and this goes back into the deck. Daisy's going to run over here to the path, try to get as many clues as she can. After you reveal a terror in the path, take two damage if you have no actions remaining. Fortunately, not the case. So he's like, leave that one for me. Go find another one. Because uh, she can actually... She'll actually be able to deal with this one pretty easily uh, and possibly pick up both of these herself. Actually, if I use deduction, she's got two more turns. She can't heal any more physical damage from herself. Yeah, I think I'm going to go over here and just see what I can find. Two. So I have zero actions remaining. So fortunately, when I reveal it, I take one horror for each action remaining. I have zero actions. This was the perfect order to get these in. So wait, one, two. No, I have... Oh, no, I'm going to take one horror. Crud. I have one action remaining. So I'm going to go for bang for buck. We're going to use magnifying glass and deduction. And that way, if I, if it's successful, I can discover both clues. Uh, right now I'm at an 8, and this is at a 2. Excellent. Success. Uh, so I get both of these. None of the monsters are going to attack. Uh, Zoe's going to take one physical damage. And then we move, advance the agenda, or advance the mythos. Ancient evils, place one doom. I can deal with that better than I can deal with anything else. Spaces between, flip each non-sentinel location in play to its unrevealed side, removing any, removing all clues from it. Each investigator and enemy at a location flipped in this way immediately moves to the nearest non, uh, nearest sentinel hill location. So basically, I'm going to come back here. These clues get tossed in. And now we're going to shuffle. Now we're going to shuffle, 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 and hope for the best. OK, Zoe's going to go first. I think Zoe is going to head here first. Uprooted Woods. After you reveal uprooted, wood, uh, uprooted Woods, discard the top five cards of your deck if you have no actions remaining. Fortunately, I still have actions remaining, so we're going to put two clues here. And uh, she's going to go ahead and use Rite of Seeking uh, for this last one. Uh, this means this is going to get discarded. What I'm hoping is I do not get one of the special symbols. Uh, but this means that she is going to be at... She is going to be at what? Uh, five? No, four. Uh, she's going to be at four to two. Plus one is a success. She gets both clues. And that means that we don't have to screw around with these woods anymore. We can go straight to here. All right, so we have four clues. Daisy has no more moves. Or Zoe has no more moves. So I'm going to go ahead and move up to Sentinel Hill using all four clues. Uh, when an investigator at this location draws a hex card, that investigator takes one damage. There are going to be four clues on here. And we advance the agenda. Approaching the peak of Sentinel Hill, you are confronted by several citizens of Dunwich. The man in the center of their circle is desperately trying to complete a Latin incantation. It's not working, Seth, one of the other men cries out. What are we going to do? The man in the center stops his chant and pulls out a cobbler's knife. The father demands a blood sacrifice, he declares, and his face twists into a crazed expression. Before you can react, he slits his throat at his left wrist with the knife, 
dropping it to his knees in agony. The headstone of the altar behind him splits open. A torrent of energy pours out of the stone, coalescing into the form of an open gate. Seth holds open onto the stone in front of him to prevent himself from being sucked into the gate, but several of the others are startled and pulled through it. You barely manage to dig your heels in and grab hold of a nearby rock in time to resist the pull of the gate. Seth rises, wounded but alive, an expression of pride spreads across his pained faith. Put the set-aside Seth Bishop enemy into play at Sentinel Peak with one damage per investigator on top of him. All right, so there's also an investigation thing going on where basically if I can get four clues, uh, I can advance. Uh, Seth is nasty. Uh, he's got retaliate, and he's got a fight of five. So he's going to spawn in Daisy's um, Bailiwick. And because of the retaliate, I'm, I'm not sure what I can do here. She's still got two moves left. But as soon as she takes a couple horrors, she's done. So first of all, let's get the damage on him. I, I don't know what to do here. Um, obviously, I have no way, real way of fighting him or escaping him. Like, there's nothing I can do in that respect. I can try to get clues. What I'm wondering is, uh, what, when an investigator is taken out what happens to the clues so like if I spend my time just simply getting those two clues or two of those four clues just checking Let's check elimination. There's all all sorts of like. Yeah, basically any of the clue tokens I find would just be placed down at the pool. So I think the only thing I can really do is just draw a card and hope for the best. Uh, strange solution, test, strange solution. Uh, if you succeed, discard strange solution and draw two cards. Record in this campaign log that you have identified the solution. So this was a card I decided to put into my deck. And I don't know if this is actually coming from the next one. Uh, I don't think it is, um, but this is a card that's meant to basically be able to help uh, in a future scenario. So what I could do is, uh, so I'm going to take, because I drew a card, I'm taking one retaliatory damage each. And Daisy's last action is to use pretty much everything else. Oh, she's got to put it in play first, damn it. So, never mind. She's not going to be able to do that. Because, um, yeah, he takes attacks of opportunity, retaliates if I miss. There's no way that I can hit, so no matter what, I'm taking three damage of each. So there's no point. I really wish I had gotten to Strange Solution earlier because then I could have investigated, but unfortunately, yeah, uh, there's, there's nothing else I can do. I'm just going to go ahead and take the damage. Seth has wiped me out, uh, so he's up here. Daisy's done. There was no point in getting the clues because that would just leave the clues later for Zoe to get on her own. So he is going to take one damage. These are all going to go up here. So she's going to get, uh, I think, horror trauma this time because of the way that worked out. And I could have applied the remaining damage to Henry, 
but I don't. It would not have made much of a difference. All right. So Daisy's done. All right. So Zoe's going to get to. The monster's not a hunter, so it's not going to come down to us until it wants, like, until we need to. Uh, so Zoe is going to draw a card. She gets a flashlight, and she gets a resource. And we're going to add a Doom token to the agenda. She's going to get a card, Obscuring Fog. This is going to make this much more difficult to search. We don't care. All right, so the first thing that she's going to do is I think use one resource for smoking pipe. Okay, she can do all of these immediately. So she's gonna heal all her horror and replace it with three damage. I know what you're saying, what are you doing? That's all that's all one action. As her second and third action, she's going to go ahead and get some resources. And that's it. Monster phase, he stays up here. She gets a resource and then draws a card. Zebulon Watley. We draw one of these and add one of these. Light of a Forgotten basically means that uh, we are looking at, doesn't really matter, direct damage. She is going to take three more resources and that is going to be her turn. We add another one of these. She also gets one more resource and one more card. Emergency cash, I really could have used that earlier. Altered Beast, if there is an, no, if there are no abominations in play, uh, okay, yeah, I can attach this to the Thrall down here. Does not say that it's a limited one. Oh, and I forgot, I'm supposed to keep taking damage from, ah, oh, crud. So there's two more damage. Two more damage that I could have done something about. So this term, time around, I'm dealing with this, this, and I'm also going to play Emergency Aid. That will deal with two damage. I should have taken that into a better consideration. Uh, all right, so one more resource. One more. One more card. And I know I'm going all over the place base at the hill. All right. So now she's got six resources. She is going to go out and pull out her lightning gun. That's going to use three ammo. She is going to have to discard her machete and 45 to be able to do this. She's okay with that. Uh, can she do this in one turn? No, she cannot, but she's not going to wait. She's going to head straight up there. Uh, she's going to use overpower. So she's going to be fighting at six. And this gives plus five, so she's at 11. And this will do three damage. If I get a star, I knock him out. Oh, and after I and after you become engaged with an enemy, gain one resource. I kept I keep forgetting that. I think I have forgotten all the way through this entire game to collect resources every time I engage an enemy. Zero. That's fine. Does three damage. Uh, I don't have any more turns though, so it is going to attack now. It's going to do one and one. I'm then going to get a resource, draw a card. So he's cross where you've been all my life. We're going to advance the agenda. We're at seven, three more to go. Test four. 
This is even Steven. We're going to go ahead and use Zebulon Watley to do this one, so it's six to four. Ah, uh, discard two cards. Steadfast doesn't give anything. Four for Beat Cop, so I fail. Uh, if I fail, discard one asset I control. No! Okay, so Chip, uh, Chris Jill just basically broke my lightning gun. I am, however, going to go ahead and use one resource, engage, bring into Zoe's cross, and then exhaust it and spend another resource, and that will defeat Seth Bishop. Uh, I do have to take one damage and one horror as a result, though because I get, left him a, an open opportunity to attack. Unbelievable. That goes into the victory. All right, so now we still have to get these, uh, these resources. So that was one, two, three to get a resource. Then I drag one more resource. Well, actually, no. What am I doing? Uh, my third action is not going to be get a resource. It's to use emergency cash to get four resources. What am I doing? I'm being an idiot. Now I draw one more resource and draw a card. It's a knife. Eight. So I got to get all these clues. Oh, and at the end of the round, Detective Devotee of the Key moves up a spot. And that means pretty much the next turn he's going to, it's going to be the end of the game. Test five. Which means I don't think I can win this game now because there's no way for me to get an extra clue. Like it's going to take one turn to get the flashlight into play. sake yeah I I can't I can't win unbelievable I don't think I can win I don't even know what I was doing what was I doing I was testing five minus two so I lose by three points uh, discarding the top three cards of my deck I'm almost done as far as that goes, too. All right, so one resource to bring the knife into play. I head back down here, engage Devotee of the Key, exhaust this to deal one damage. And then I'm going to discard the knife. Yeah, no matter what. I mean, it's it's it was all three turns to deal with this zero it's it's done the devotee of the key is dead but unfortunately because of the way that that worked is that there's no way that i can actually deal with the sentinel peak because i it, i have two turns left and there's just no way so i draw a resource smite the wicked Third time. This is what? Scenario seven out of eight. And three times now I've gotten Smite the Wicked right before the game ends. Avian Thrall. Uh, Spawn the location farthest from me. Well, technically, this is sort of a centerpiece. It's one away from everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and spawn it. Do I have anything at all that can deal with this, though? I don't. 
I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. All right, it's not completely over yet, but good lord. Now is the top card, so I don't have to shuffle. Um, is Avian Thrall a hunter? It is a hunter, so it's actually going to come after me. So it's going to come after me and do one damage each. Yay. Spaces between doesn't really matter. It just affects these locations. They get flipped. Nothing really happens. I think this actually now goes to here. Yeah. Okay, so I can do this to do one damage. Uh, it's five. I'm at four. I have nothing for bonuses, uh, so I have to get a plus one. If I get a star, I was supposed to gain a resource too. If I get a star, I'll do plus one damage. So I need plus one three times, or plus one and plus a star. So skull, that's minus one. That is unsuccessful. So now I need plus one and a star. If neither of those come up, I don't defeat the Avian Thrall. It's going to eight. So it'll kill me. Zero. So yeah, it's going to kill me. And I'll get the Mental Trauma to boot. Minus one. Didn't get any of them. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it's going to now attack. Uh, it does enough physical damage to Zoe that it kills her. She is dead. We had one card left before we got to Beyond the Veil. I was so excited that we got Seth taken out, right? Like, I was real excited about that. Uh, the sorcerers from Dunwich, seeking arcane power from beyond this realm, have accomplished what Wilbur and Old Watley could not. Through blood sacrifice and indescribable experiments, the dark power the sorcerer sought is now within their reach. However, they will never get the chance to truly wield this power. In beseeching Wilbur's father for knowledge, they have drawn the creature forth from an extra-dimensional, extra 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 realm. Yog Sothoth emerges from an open rift above Sentinel Hill, blotting out the sky and enveloping the world. Now it has come to Earth, and it rules where humanity once tread. Oh, yeah, we just lost the campaign. Oh, that's good. We are driven insane and we lose the campaign. So we tried. We uh, we failed. We had to basically get these clues. If By not getting the clues, um, that is the big thing that led us to not being able to succeed. Um, I think that was the only way that we could get through. If this had simply managed to get to the agenda, we would have, we would have gotten to R two and as well. So pretty much that was uh, that's it. Uh, the the investigators are driven insane. All our efforts are for naught. We killed Seth Bishop for nothing. Um, my lightning bolt did no good whatsoever. Poor Zoe, poor Daisy. Let's pour one out in the chat for them. Pour one out in the comments for poor Daisy and Zoe. Zoe, together now, insane in heaven, smooching. Because they they were a couple. I think I forgot to like I, I mentioned that at the beginning of the campaign, but they were a couple. They care very much about each other. They have their anniversary coming up next month, and it was all because of some stupid, all because of the guys. Okay, let's just say let's just put it right where it is. 
the guys wanted to control the world. And what happened? Every The entire world got destroyed and everybody went insane, including these two. You know, it's just, you know, you, you have to ask yourself, what are what is your cost for your quest for power? Is it is it the world? Does everybody go insane? Do we get a civil war in this country? Yeah, maybe maybe your power isn't worth it. Maybe it's just not maybe it's just not worth it to destroy everything around you uh, in the sake of power. You know, because you end up bringing out Yogg's thoughts. Anyway, folks, on that note, uh, I, we're not going to be able to play the last game uh, because we're dead. Uh, we're all insane. We're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we will not be doing Arkham Horror tomorrow, so don't worry. We'll, we'll be doing a different game. Uh, in fact, my local uh, gaming store had a uh, had a, 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 a sale on demo versions. So I've got a demo version of something called Escape the Castle that I'm looking forward to trying. Uh, by the way, I don't know if there are actually like good resources out there. For, for this sort of thing, but I decided to make my own little dividers here because I, I when I when I went to go play this again and start this up now, I found it really confusing the way that everything was in here. Uh, and you'll see actually like for each of the monster types, I've been adding little divisions as we come across them. Uh, the reason that you don't see any for these or these is because these are part of Path of Carcosa. This is actually part of Tear Through Space. Um, and this is part of Circle Undone. And the reason that they don't have any is we have just simply haven't come across them yet. And when I was divvying, when I was going through this, I was realizing that some of the stuff that's meant to stay over here, like this is the Dunham Legacy, these are the individual chapters, all of which have a special symbol. Some of the cards for these were actually over here. That includes for the train one, which is one of the more fun ones to do. Um, the uh, the train one, the cards ended up uh, in here, and I ended up missing. I forgot to include all the train cards in the train deck. So one of the reasons that that was a lot easier than it should have been, I didn't have any passengers to worry about. Everybody just kept, everybody was fine. Everybody was hunky-dory because I completely screwed up. Adam Lynch never came out once, by the way. We had Adam Lynch, I think relatively early on, added him to our repertoire of people. Not once did he come out, just never came out. So Daisy's going to go in here into that. Zoe is going to take her cross. And where is that weakness? That pesky weakness that I got three times. All right, Zoe's going to go in here. She's going to go under the Guardians. And then I'm not going to, you're not, you're not going to have to watch all this, but these are all the, the rest of the cards, and I'll divvy them up and put them in here in nice little ways. Uh, but folks, thank you so much for joining me. Do all the YouTube things. Let me know uh, what I did wrong, all the mistakes I made, and whether or not you want to see either Path uh, to Corcosa or Circle Undone later this year. Uh, obviously, no time soon. Um, but, you know, I could see it as doing it like a Halloween one uh, or a November one. Folks, thank you so much for your support, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.